Hello, everybody from frigid Spirit Lake, Iowa. Our weather report that we always start with at the beginning of every every show um, is cold, cold, and more cold. Um, we were really on track for summer right around the corner, and we had we even had 90 degree day last week, I think. And uh, now they're forecasting snow for tomorrow, I believe, and uh, it's been raining and water temperature was probably almost up to 60 and now it's all the way down again and we'll be ice fishing again in no time so yep Santa's coming Santa's coming <laughs> okay um, if you joined us last week if you remember we talked about ears and um, we went over a variety of ears there's especially when it comes to white-tailed deer there's more ear liners than you can shake a stick at and there's a lot of good ear liners on the market, and we kind of showed you what to look for. There's ear liners with really nice preformed ear butts, and the only, the only thing with these, you have to make sure that conforms to your mannequin in the pose that you want. Um, preformed ear butts, if you're gonna have an ears forward, are exceptional. If you're gonna have an ears back, you would wanna get a buttless ear, such as this, several companies carry these and they have a cast earbud in either ears back, ears forward, whatever formation that you want. And that can be modeled to your mannequin as well. There again, when you use the preformed earbuds, make sure that your earbud, the flat surface right here, conforms to your deer side of your deer's face where the ear indexes in. Um, and it doesn't hurt to have a little idea of anatomy of a deer, <coughs> where his eustachian tube, is that the right term, um, comes down and actually goes into the side of the deer's skull. And if you have a skull that's a very valuable reference material, when you tape out a deer next time, leave the ear attached for as long as you can, remove the meat and follow the ear canal down into your skull and it will open up your eyes to what what really happens within this ear butt. Um, a real deer does not have a big old wad of clay that's just smacked up against his um, side of his face. There's a whole little anatomical plumbing system that goes, <laughs> holds a lot of gel trait down in there. Um, but kind of do that, that's very, very helpful for you to even see the motion of an ear. Um, we talk about scutiform cartilage all the time. On some ear liners, you can actually see the scutiform cartilage is on the top of the ear actually modeled in, um, and that's kind of a hinge that allows that ear to pivot. There's a lot of anatomy going on that, that spend a little time rather than just caping a deer and cleaning it up, salting it, send it to the tannery. Um, go ahead and, and kind of dissect it and take apart the parts and see how they actually lay in there and how they look. And we have um, these ear casts by Mark Gonnering. These are excellent. This is a ears back and it um, actually has the muscles numbered. So when you build a uh, you know, the musculature of the ear butt, you'll actually put them in in order. Brian Olson, I think, um, drew us a little picture one time at a show on how these lay. The number two lays over number one, number three lays over number two. Um, number four uh, meets on the top of the scutiform cartilage, and here's number five. And something like this is really handy to have Pictures are great. We have lots of good pictures that you can, you can actually look at, but 3D is even better. So arm yourself with all these different tools so that when you put um, the ear on your mannequin, you can actually see in a 3D form what this looks like, what's higher, what's lower, angles. Very, very handy. This is the ears back. Is that an ears forward? And here's the ears forward. We've got to get Mark to do the opposites of these, I think. That'd be a good, a good feature. Um, but here's the ears forward, and it shows how the ear would be forward like that, kind of like uh, this one over here. 
and how the muscles lay. They're all kind of compressed up in here, whereas on the ears back, they're all stretched out a little bit. But <clears throat> photos are great. Um, ear casts are really essential. Once you understand how things work, uh, setting ears are much easier. And we're going to show you our method of setting ears today and building the ear butts because we do it a little different than a lot of people. Um, we put a little more effort into it, but we think we get a whole lot more life in our ear butts as well as our ear liners. So we'll uh, show you our method and, and uh, give it a try and see what you think. Any of you have any questions, we're here to answer questions the whole show long, so don't be afraid to type in your questions and, and like and share, right? If they like and share, you win something. And uh, so first thing, you, you kind of, we set the antlers on, we're going to do this deer, we're going to kind of combine them, but we're going to set ears on this deer over here, and you can, uh, you can set your eyes, you can cut your lips lots, you can, it doesn't matter what order that you really do things on. If you set your eyes and you're cutting your lips a lot and you're sawing and things like that, your eyes are probably going to fall off. So you will have a preferred method and an order for doing things. Um, same with ears. If you're turning them inside, upside down to cut your lips a lot or work on your nose, your ears fall off. So there is an order to do things. Um, we like to do, um, I guess, noses and mouth, lips first. Um, you can set your ears and your eyes, you know, um, it's always nice for me to have the eyes set when I'm working on ears. I, the mannequin starts coming to life. And when the mannequin comes to life, you get more excited about the project you're doing and makes it more fun. Um, so when you're ready to put on your, your ears, the first thing we want to do is select an ear liner that we think we're gonna, going to you Correct me if I say something bad. Um, we're going to select an ear liner that we think is going to going to work in our ear, and this tape has been thinned, all the prep work, I mean these lips, when we do, when we thin a face ready to mount, um, we take a lot of pride and a lot of care in thinning this. If you do not thin your lips thin enough, when you tuck a great deal of tissue, you spread your lip skin, so that's your lip slot, so that's real bad. Noses, um, now this one we're using, and this one we're using a, a purchase nose, pre-modeled nose, and so we usually will test fit them and we thin that nose skin really thin, but this is gonna get trimmed pretty short. So it'll go around in, and uh, if you've never tried, um, not to put a plug in for our noses, but if you've never tried one, you've got to try them. They are, they will give you the nicest looking deer, provided you do your job um, of any, any nose on the market. And like we've showed you before, <clears throat> I think you used a molded nose or a cast nose, and I dug one out, and I did one nostril in like 20 minutes, and you had the entire nose done in four minutes, I think. Um, they're very fast, very accurate. Symmetry is unequaled, they're exceptional. Um, don't need to dwell on noses, but they're good if you, if you wanna try something that you'll wonder how you ever got by without. Um, so anyway, we thin these down really, really thin. Everywhere is nice and thin. Also thin, thin the uh, side of your face. You know, this has all been I can see like scythe knife marks, somebody, somebody cleaned this really, really good. I assume you. Um, tear ducts. Tear ducts need to be extremely thin. Again, on, a, on the tear duct, the lacrimal gland, if that's thick and you try to tuck that thick skin, you are forcing that foam open and then the skin dries. And when the skin dries and shrinks up, now you got a big black crack you got to deal with. Um, Quality taxidermy work, you got to have thin to win. We always, that's our term around here is thin to win, thin to win. Same with ears.
make sure when you, when you flesh your ears or get your ears ready, we want to split them to the very edges. So you're going to take whatever tool is handy for you. You can use a knife. If a knife is best for you, if you can control a knife, um, a scalpel is really, really good. Scalpels are sharp, so make sure that um, you're not cutting through. You know, be careful there. Um, score your ears. Get good at doing that. Get good at, at spreading your ears and splitting your ears to the edges. And the way we tell if we did a good job or not is we open them up and rub it between your fingers. And if you can feel, if it feels like there's a cord, any kind of cord there, go back to splitting. Little bit of, little bit of splitting and until you don't feel a cord. Another thing we like to do is on the inside of the, now the cartilage has been removed. We, uh, there's a bonded ear method we talked about last week. Bonded ear method, make sure you leave the cartilage in because the um, cartilage is necessary to hold the ear shape. So you want to leave the cartilage in for the bonded ear method. For ear liners, some people use the cartilage for ear liners, but we tend to take it off. We get a nicer ear, a thinner ear. Um, on the rib, I don't know, Kate, if you can get a close look at this. These little cartilage ribs have been split. And what that does for you, and the way to do that, is you can see them real easily, like easily by just spreading it. You can feel a thick little rib of cartilage. With a knife or a scalpel, just score that. And when you score it, it opens up a lot. And by opening it up like that, it gives you a whole bunch of slack and looseness in your ear skin and a normal tight ear skin is now going to part where you scored that. And that's, a, that's a good thing to do. We take as much of the, the tissue and stuff off of the ear base that we can. You'll also want to trim down your inner ear because that's going to go down into here. And you don't want a whole bunch of balled up cartilage and skin up in there. So. This deer, we think, is going to be pretty close to ready to mount. I'm going to turn it right side out. The first thing we want to do is we want to test fit them. Because you don't want to smear your ear cart or your ear liner. You don't want to smear your ear liner with glue, stick it up in there and go, oh shoot, it's too tight. Okay, make sure you got the right ear, correct ear, not the right ear. Got my ear liner that, that I'm intending to use. And I'm gonna slide it in. Now these are sharp. They're sharp and they're, they're thin and they're stiff. So they're like a plastic knife going in there. Don't get too rammy. Be careful, slide them in, and help them. Don't, don't just force them, help them. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time aligning the hair. I'll do that later. But now, with the ear, it's not lined up. I'm, my edges aren't where my edges need to be. However, I can tell that it's going to fit pretty nice. And what I want to see is that I don't have drumming across the ear. This skin isn't stretched taut. When the, when the skin is sort of where it's supposed to be, I can put my fingers back in the, down in there. I can push. I don't have any trampoline type action going on. If you experience drumming in your ears, it's almost always operator air. Almost always. Um, ears drum for different reasons, but it's usually lack of attention. Okay. 
Now, we, so these are going to work, we assume, right? Yeah. They fit good. Now, as they come from the company, this one has a texture. This is a um, Ultimate Airliner yeah. by yeah. Kerry Cochran, yeah. and they have a texture. The idea of the texture is that it will glue will adhere to it. It's still pretty smooth. So as as textured as it is, we still want to rough it up. If you leave a if you have a smooth ear liner and your glue doesn't want to stick, it's probably because you need to have roughed it up. So a lot of different tools you can use. We like to use the little detail form rougher. And Almost always when the drumming is going to occur on the inside. Rarely do we have drumming around the outside, but on the inside. So with the, the little detail form rougher, I'm just going to scratch it. So you're just trying to create some kind of a texture on the inside for the to stick to. Anything that will give me some texture. We have done everything. Oh, that's funny, because we have done everything. When I was in school, we drilled those things full of... Holes. Yeah, like a thousand sixteenth inch holes. Idea being that the glue would, the glue would go between the holes and hold everything together. That didn't work bad. It worked fine. We take a Dremel with a little tiny drill bit in it and go yeah. drill, 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 drill. Yep. especially in the low spots in the valley, we did, we did that um, until four people at one time were all running dremel tools and it drilled us crazy. Um, we also used to take them and dip them in lacquer thinner and then roll them in sawdust. And that worked pretty good. Um, that was an excellent thing, and I don't know if the new airliners will do that. Um, do that. Um, no, but take, test it sometime if you need something to do. We would take the plastic ear liners, put them in lacquer thinner, and they would get sticky, like they'd start disintegrating the plastic. Immediately put them in a little, we'd go down to the saw, the table saw, scoop up, you know, fine sawdust, and we'd push them in, push the sawdust into it, and that gave a wonderful texture. Um, in the old days, not too many of you will remember this, but Jonas used to carry a product, whatever it was, but it was like uh, shellac with sawdust in it, and you, you had the can, you stirred it up, and it had sawdust in it, and you would paint the ears with that. Um, it worked. There's probably only one to two people out there that would ever remember that. Those were the really old days. Those were the old, old days. Okay, now, I got it as good as I can. I can't get this tool way down in there. I kind of can, but kind of can't. So then I'm going to go to something else. I like to use the tip of a sharp knife and drag it. Just kind of scrape down inside. That's a place that is going to want to drum on you because you couldn't get enough texture scratched in there and don't drag your knife blade sharp blade first I'm drag dragging it backwards just to scratch that up Should we, is this where we bring out the disclaimer yeah, with your, <clears throat> Use the caution. I've done that and and you want to have texture wherever, whenever you have drumming and you put these in and you can't get a spot to stick, you will think back and you'll think, I knew I didn't get that scratch good enough in there. Um, you will know why when it doesn't stick. And this is, I'm dragging this out so I can show you that it really will work and we don't have any drumming, but um, it doesn't take that long. Now, I, I did pretty good down in there. Now I'm even going to take this little riffler saw. And now here's a spot that you want to get. On the underside of this surface right here, it's hard to get in there. Um, a little riffler saw works good. And I could scratch my knife up in there too.
And you can drill your holes. We did that. It worked good. Wanda would like to know what is drumming. Okay. You tell them. I'm busy. Um, drumming, I think it's just, it's not necessarily just a taxidermy term, but it's a term we use in the taxidermy business for skin that has dried across two high points and not adhered to a low point in between, causing a stretched piece of leather, kind of like a drum. So if in the instance of a deer, of a deer ear, you have the low shape of the ear, if we have leather that doesn't completely conform to this shape, then that would be, and it dries flat across there, that would be considered drumming, and it would be similar to the drum. So if you touched it, you didn't break it, um, it would probably create some kind of an echo under Um, you can have drumming in ears, probably the most common place, but you can also have drumming anywhere that you have little valleys along the mannequin. Um, it can be, a lot of times people will encounter that in the brisket. You may or may not recognize it. You might not look for it there, but that's an area that may not stick very well for you. Um, and some of the outside curve of the deer, some of the shoulder muscles will drum if you're not paying close attention, if you have a fit, um, you can see that many of those places. So. I used to play a dirty trick on my competition. I used to, whenever you're going to show a customer what you offer them and why you, you are the one for the job, I always would select a deer head in my showroom that I knew was a good deer head and there was no drumming, things like that. And I would say, okay, notice the nictitating membranes, notice, notice the little nodules on the nose all reconstructed, notice uh, the white-based eyes, you know, every little bell and whistle that I put into the deer. And then I'll say, look at those ears. I mean, the ear edges were nice and crisp, and then he'd say, what about that one up there? We're not looking at that one. Look at this one here, you know. But I'd try to select the deer that looked really nice. i say, now feel that and feel the edges. Do you feel how thin that is on the edges? And they go, you know, you kind of impress them. And I'll say, okay, now go shop. And if, if I can be the one for the job, come back. Well, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna go down to the tax room, it's down the street. First thing they're gonna do is walk in a showroom and grab his ears. And the guy's gonna get upset and they'll have a confrontation and he'll be back and you'll be doing his deer. <laughs> it worked really well. Um, now something else I'm gonna do for you is you're going to rebuild all this ear butt, and I'm just going to rough this up too so your clay sticks really well. Now, I kind of overkilled this because Brett was talking, so I just kept on roughing. But I think I've got it. it it's rough. It's scratched. Now, you can get way too Western with this, and you can shred these. We have seen students just tear them to pieces because we said rough them up real good and are real good and they're real good with something different. But uh, I can feel that I've got kind of shards of plastic all over. Not, not rough, but it's scratched up. Not, not as pretty as it came out. Not as pretty as Kerry Cochran intended it to be. But I think it sticks. Okay, That's you can do something good. with that. Sure. sure. Hand me that other one. I'll rough that one too. So the next thing we're going to do um, for this year, and we're, like Tom said, we'll bounce around a little bit. We have one that's already done um, that, that we did several days ago um, to show you how to glue them in. But the next step we would do after we know that this fits, after we know we've got all the repairs, is we're going to set these ears in the attitude that we want them on the mannequin. And always refer to your customer, ask them what they want, that they expect. Um, that's one thing that you don't want to have to change 
you're just going to sculpt a, a clay to your butt on this mannequin here. And we'll put it right back there. So um, to do that, I'm going to use critter clay. Critter clay works really well for us. Um, animal clay is another really good choice for clays. Um, what else we got for clay? This would probably, those two would probably They're be They're the strongest. Our, yeah. Our choices. And the reason um, strong is important, that's, that's good to, to bring up because uh, we want something that we can let dry overnight that will have some integrity and we can come back the next day and pop them off and they will hold their, hold their shape. Um, with some of the porcelain stoneware clays, um, they just don't hold their shape very well. Fortunate. want to show them what happens with this? Um, yeah, do you want to show them? You show them real quick. These are the uh, XP forms, and they actually leave an indentation um, for your ear base that, th if this was an ear's back, that ear lays in here. Here's where your eustachian tube is. Goes right where that little indent is and you line them up like that. As that ear goes back and turns and rotates, um, this shape is already imprinted in there. So that ear would look, I'm holding him way crooked, but it would look a little bit like that. And as it comes forward, it follows that, that shape and will stay right where the little indentation is kind of automatic. Those are nice. Those are very, very nice. Taxidermists have it easy. This they day and age. do. That's very, very true. Okay. So we will get this one up here. I'm just going to use a small amount of clay to stick to our mannequin. You can, you can um, recess that if you want to. You can push on it. Um, or you can cut a little bit of a recess with a knife. We're going to bring it just about right there. Um, a couple of observations. This, the very top of the ear is going to come in about even with the top of the head. So right here, the top of the ear. If you got the ear set way down here, you'll notice that you'd have a big hump down through there, that's not going to be accurate. 
Um, the bottom of the ear butt is going to come in here right below the bottom of the eye orbit. So this looks like we're real close. Um, there's a lot of rules of thumb. Everybody's got a couple of one or two different ones that they like to adhere to, but um, we like to bring them up there. And, and oftentimes, there's not going to be a whole bunch of gap here between the main beam and the top of the ear when we get that muscle built. But we've got just enough clay to kind of get that started. And then we'll start sculpting from there. That's a pretty high ear angle. So for right now, we're just going to get it supported and built back to the mannequin so that, the, so that it doesn't fall off. Built just a little bit there, which would be underneath the scutiform. And just start blending it onto that mannequin. And um, the important part that you don't want to forget is to rough up your mannequin and rough up your ear liner. Um, Prior to putting these on, um, it will stick much better. And then when you go to mount the deer, you don't have to come in with, with a, with a uh, form rougher and interrupt your clay work or, or anything like that. It, it, it will be all done for you already. I'm going to put just a little bit on the back side here to blend this blend this ear muscle into the back of the head, making sure that the ear butt does not extend behind the head. And that's important. Real easy to get those traveling back and forth if you don't have that little index reference point. Uh, be careful of that. Now, as some of you are watching Brett do this, <clears throat> I, I can hear you through the camera wires <laughs> thinking, why does he go to all that work? All I do is take a ball of clay and stick it in there and it's done. Um, you're going to see, I think, when it's all finished, that the symmetry is going to be unsurpassed. The anatomy is going to be really evident. It's just going to give a really nice, attractive ear base um, without having big bulges in the yeah. wrong spot and things like that. Um, we never used to do this until we kind of uh, met the competitor's choice and XP people. And they started showing us at um, doing demonstrations at our booth at shows. And you know, we watched this so many times that we just kind of adapted it in our sure. shop. And uh, it will really give you a yeah. better product. The first time it feels time excessive, ex the second mm -hmm. time you get twice as fast. You get and faster. Yeah, yep, it goes pretty good. We have a couple of questions. Austin Brewer would like to know what kind of clay do you like to use? Um, we are using critter clay for this, and you could use um, animal clay. That's another really good one. Um, we, we hit that real quick, but um, there's a ton of different clays out there. We like basically a good strong clay that's not going to crack because we're going, to, um, we're going to let this dry overnight. So we will do some things to prevent that cracking or to help, but um, we like critter clay or animal clay. There are people that will do competition ears with epoxies. epoxies. Um, I've seen that done, it done exceptionally well. You gotta be really confident in your ear no, position. You, no change in it. Yeah, there's no out. going back. Um, and um, I've also seen people do, just like you said, they'll just use a large amount of clay, roll it up, push it into the ear skin without ever sculpting it here. Um, and a tip for doing that, that I heard the other day that I thought was pretty smart, was to take whatever their amount is in their hand and they'll weigh it, weigh they'll it weigh down. two of them um, and making, making sure the left side matches the right. It might, they might both be too big, but at least if you yeah. start with the same amount, um, you're gonna be able to uh, make sure that you've got the same left and right. And symmetry is probably 80% of the game anyways. So um, now you can see I have just kind of the basics here but you can see a lot of anatomy that we don't have showing in this ear just yet. Um, I'm going to want to build this connection. We'll build number one, where it, it's a little muscle that I think the guys call them little bacon strips that kind of run through here that connect onto the body, um, onto the neck. 
Then we'll bring two in here from just below the corner to the back side of the, of the eye orbit. So that'll come across here. Then we've got the little connective tissues here in number three, number four, and then we'll define the, uh, the scutiform. So I'm gonna do that kind of quick, but um, we'll give you a bit of an idea on what we do for those. So it's nice to take your, your clay, and some people will do this in rolls, and, and that's fine if you have a little roll of clay that you like to use, a, a size, a pencil size, or whatever it is. But if you look at your deer when you, when you cape them out, you'll notice that these muscles are more like thin straps than they are little round, round shapes. So um, think of them in terms of little straps that, and oh, I'm gonna show you one thing that's helpful too. Um, if you have one of these fancy dandy little casts, one really helpful little tool, it's gonna make your cast a little bit dirty, but if you'll take your little strip of clay and lay it right on top of your cast, you will see the proper width and length just like that. So that's what I need to replace up onto my mannequin. As easy as that is, I'm gonna peel that off and I'm just gonna bring it right over here, making sure that I'm stopping just short of the V where it connects and bring it right down through there, connecting into the side of the head, just like that. The next one, uh-oh, <laughs> don't get that out. Look at that, these are good pictures. Um, those are really good pictures. Um, there's a wealth of knowledge in those Oh, look at that. Books. I want that to look just like that. That's buckwheat, isn't it? I remember those. Um, you can't beat reference material. Reference, reference, reference. Every seminar should start with reference, and if it doesn't, um, make sure and start your project with reference. Um, it will show in the end. So number two, is going to lay right across here. I think I'm pretty good for shape. Um, we're going to bring number two right across like that. And that's going to run from just under the notch right toward the bottom of the eye orbit, straight across there. Just about like that. I need to build a little bit more right in front there. We have a little more build up right here underneath that strip. I do have a question from Teresa Hellerman, and she would like to know for competition, do you leave the inner ear on or do you cut it off and use the liner detail? <laughs> I, <feel like laughs> I, think, I think Tom's going to answer that one. Um, um, yes. There are so many ways to do that. There are, there are inserts that you can buy that you can stick down in there that, that you can blend to your skin. Um, you can cast your own inner ear. Um, the problem with the plastic parts is you don't have the hair and the little fibers that an inner ear has. Um, I did a black tail one time and not knowing what to do and I thought of a thousand different ways and chickened out at the end and left. I left this much cartilage on my ear thinking it's going to shrink and I'm gonna lose a point in shrinkage and the comment from the judge was excellent inner ear detail. And I thought, either I got a really bad judge or <laughs> I got really, really lucky. So the next white tail I did, I thought that worked so good, I'm gonna do it again. And helps if you mount the deer the night before too. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've done it a couple times with extremely good comments, leaving the cartilage and tucking it down in here and it held my shape of my inner ear, which worked for me. Um, there's a lot of different ways. If you, think, if you think you're good enough, 
to peel that cartilage off and, and mount it around inner ear detail, that's really good if you can do that. I didn't think I was talented enough to do that. So I left my cartilage on and it's worked for me a couple times. Good question, very good question. <laughs> Better than the answer. <laughs> Wanda Galliff would like to know, how do you get the ears over the liners without busting up the clay? Is the cape cut all the way down to the back? No, that's a great question. It is. Um, we're going to show you that you in stay just tuned. a minute. Um, but to give you a little sneak preview, um, this clay, as soft and, and uh, malleable as it is right now, um, is going to get very firm by sitting overnight. But we don't want it to get completely dry. So we're going to put a little layer of glue over it. And that glue is going to act almost like a plastic bag. It's going to let a little bit of moisture escape, but it's still going to be somewhat damp and uh, really easy to work with. So um, you'll Stay see that tuned. in just a second. I'll go fast. You're good. Um, we've got a couple little muscles. This is, so I've done, I'm probably cheating you here. I've done uh, one and two, and now I've got three, four, and five to concern myself with, and a little bit there off of five. So I'm gonna bring number three about halfway between here and here. Whoops. That's gonna go right there. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm good size and shape, like so. That's going to be three. And then I'm just going to bring that up over two, about like that. Just about like that. It's interesting, after you've done this a few times, we used to have live deer here. And, and some of them were extremely, um, like to be petted, you know. And, and there were certain places in certain itches that they like to be scratched. <laughs> they did, and, I remember uh, that. One place was up on the top of the ear. Yeah. There is a dished in area. And until you do ears like this and build up the clay, you don't realize that. It's those muscles all coming together. But um, Buckwheat was our oldest yeah. ear. And he really liked that little depression rubbed. And you stick your finger in there and just rub that little depression. And he liked that after you've modeled the ears like this, you go, ah, that's where these muscles that's all come spot. together. Yeah. And another place was right on the inside of the opening right here, right in front, there's another little depression that he liked scratched. And by having live deer that you're able to pet and then working with clay and trying to make it accurate, you realize you know, how all those muscles come together. Yeah. It's crazy how all of these little parts work together. Um, the last section here is number five, and this is going to tie all the way up onto your ear liner. It's going to sit over the scutiform, which is here. You can see it's kind of highlighted there. And that's going to tie across there. I did put in, I'm sorry, I did fill in a little bit there at number four, but I already had most of that in place. so. I've got that there. There's another little muscle we'll put in right here. Um, and then I'm going to fill in just a little bit more. You can see I'm a little weak right here. I'm going to fill that space right there. So. Now, not to minimize this method of doing this, but if you do your ears like this, even if you're not entirely correct, it's going to be better than probably what you were doing before. Um, yeah. Doing it this method and getting off a little bit is still going to give you a better product. Absolutely. Yeah. Much, much better. Mike Cutchrell would like to know if we can do a video on sculpting in the eye clay work. Angle. We'll do that too. We will. Yeah. Stay tuned, Mike. I know somebody suggested we do that real recently.
we have a lot of videos to do. I think one of our camera ladies want to do the live fishing. Also. I know, I know. We got to go fishing. It's going to be time because it's going to be snow on the ground here pretty soon. And the live fishing broadcast isn't the problem. It's the live catching broadcast <laughs> that you might be disappointed in. Remember how we do the little cooking show thing where this one's <laughs> already done? We might have one in the live well. Um, okay, here we are on really Thursday, the <laughs> <laughs> which was really filmed on. Not with Kate. Kate. Only we lived in a we don't? <laughs> um, I think that's going to get us pretty close there on the front. Um, we could sit here and, and play an awful lot more with that. But you can see how this, this little muscle here connects back onto the ear liner. The scutiform cartilage sits underneath down here. Um, and the last thing I have to do is a little bit of work on the back. But rather than um, flip them around and show you, I can just show you here. These muscles are very thin, but they connect here to the back of the head off of the back of the ear liner. They'll come in, connect to the back of the skull, and that's a pretty, most of your mannequins will have that space right back there. So um, that's the last thing I'll do. And then um, after I get that in, I will connect that. And then the very last thing we'll do, um, Usually wouldn't do this until we sculpt the other side, um, but we'll go ahead and go with it now, um, is to paint this with a little bit of glue. Um, and we've also learned that in this step, painting, we, we had always done the clay, painted the clay with glue, but then learned that by painting the entire ear liner, it's almost like a primer, and we let that dry, and we get really good adhesion um, the next week. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, you can take your glue straight out of the bucket. Um, I would encourage you to stir it up. This is Pro One Hide Paste. It's just stirred up, it's nice and creamy. Um, we're just gonna take a little bit, it doesn't take much, and we'll start coating that. Um, I'm going to start inside the ear, just out of habit. And just a nice thin coat inside the ear. And then I'm going to go all over the clay. Now the clay itself is pretty strong, but this is like encasing all of that clay in a tight plastic bag. Yeah. So tomorrow, if we came in to mount it, it would still be pliable. It'd still be somewhat soft. It'll dry overnight. Um, a lot of the moisture will come out of it, but you'll notice that um, the question of how do you keep it from breaking, um, this is the secret right here. And then, are we going to show them how to glue it in? Good to or go. Do you want to wash one? Okay. Um, now, we've already tested it, so, so I know that this ear liner, which we've used on this deer, fits. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wash this skin. This skin has come from the tannery, or you tanned it yourself. There's some kind of a tanning oil on it. And even when we tan them ourselves, we tend to go really easy on the, any of the tanning oils, whether you're True Bond or Liquitan or whatever you're using or, or sulfonated tanning oils, we actually leave it off of the, the ear itself thinking that that's just going to be a mold release for our ear liner. Yeah. So this doesn't have much, much for oils on it, but if it comes from the tannery, it all got oiled, it went through tumblers, things like that. First thing I want to do is I want to wash this exceptionally clean. And I'm going to do that with lacquer thinner in case there are oils on there. Now we've done different things. We've done, we've done alcohols. We've done lacquer yeah. thinners. We've done acetones. Um, so what I'm going to do is stick the whole ear in here. 
You might want to wear rubber gloves. And I'm going to take a wire brush and try to scrub as any, any and all oils free. Now I'm just doing the back of the ear now. I haven't even got to the front of the ear. If you're using um, latex gloves, lacquer thinner and latex, lacquer thinner eats latex so you won't have a glove when you're done. Okay, the inner ear, this, this skin is extremely, extremely thin. So don't get too rugged with it because you're going to tear it. So what are you going to fish for when we go fishing? Bluegill? We can, we can, maybe <laughs> we can do that. that. That would be, well, that's a, that's that'd be an easier, easier one. Yeah, that's one of the easier. We thought we were going to get stuck with something hard. <laughs> we like to hear that. Uh, Joseph Matthews says, question for a future video to do a paint a fish with pan pastel colors or have a video of doing this. And I think we actually do have a few videos on our YouTube under our, um, I believe we have a painting playlist on YouTube, but. Painting playlist, that's fancy. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've spent some time with pan pastels on a largemouth bass. I think maybe a walleye. Um, none of which are completely painted with pan pastels. We use, the, we use them in conjunction with several different painting mediums, but um, they might find some stuff on there that way. You know, everybody wants a secret, the secret potion to paint the perfect bluegill walleye, deer nose, whatever it happens yeah. to be. And there really isn't one. It's whatever you yes. handle the best. And yep. a story once upon a time, we had this <clears throat> taxidermist from south of the border <laughs> down the yeah. road. Yep. And we came out with those um, wax paints. They're called, um, what are they called? Rub-on, I think. Rub-on rub paints, paints. Rub -ons. yeah. yeah. Um, now I'm going to take this uh, detailed rougher, and I'm going to actually softly, now you can tear these, but I'm going to try to suede my leather. So kind of like your ear liner, you're just giving it something to stick to. Just something to stick to. And so we go to the... Iowa taxidermy show one year, and his name was Juan. And these were brand new, and he was up at the shop and showed him we used them on walleyes all the time, you know, the golds and things like that. Carefully, and he's probably watching. I know, that's all right. <laughs> and uh, Juan goes, Tomas, Tomas, come see, come see, see what I did. I painted, it was a bluegill, going after a worm, it was only attached by the worm, it was a very artistic little thing. and. He says, I did what you said. I did what you said. I said, what did I say? He said, I used those rub-on paints, those we call them finger paints, to paint the bluegill. And it looked actually very good. They come in different colors and golds and blues and things. And he said, I did what you said. I did what you said. And uh, he got a best of category, and he got a blue ribbon, first place, yeah. everything. And he did it with wax paints and this little finger. You know, so it's yeah. not, it's not how you do it. It's how well you do what you do. Yeah, tools in your toolbox. Okay, now this suades this very nice. It, I'm just getting little tags of leather sticking up, and uh, I know that my glue is going to want to stick to those little things. And there's a couple stitches in here, so if you've got stitches, be a little careful. Mark Larson says, I love watching and have ordered a bunch of your products, my friends. Oh, thank Thanks, you. Thank Mark. you. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, we show you a few ways 
to do things in ways that work well for us, but they are by no means the only way. I mean, there's there's ear builder material. There's machets that oh, yeah. people make nice yeah. ear butts out of. And there again, it's how well you do what you do. Yeah. Now, if I were doing this by myself, I probably would have stopped by now, but when you're doing it in front of a live audience, <laughs> um, you don't want your ears to drum. Okay, now, I've got them suede pretty nicely, I think. I'm gonna take a hair dryer, and I wanna dry the surface. I wanna dry the lacquer thinner off the surface. And I'm not using hot, I'm using kind of just a soft warm. I know all of you are thinking, wow, how does he remember all this stuff? Well, I remember all this stuff because out of the corner of my eye, I can see Brett putting out the different glues we got to talk about, and I can see the mixing things we have to talk about. That's how I remember it. <laughs> like magic. Uh. Now, the thing to remember is when skin dries, skin shrinks. Yes. And when skin shrinks, it contracts. So that's why I don't want this dry because uh, it, will, it will start to not want to fit. So we have to get it glued in, and that's why I use the cold or cool settle, kind of just a warm setting on the hair dryer. Okay, I think I've got it nice and surface dry. It doesn't feel cold and clammy anymore. Um, now let's talk about glues. Um, we have a whole assortment of different <laughs> adhesives to put these in, and we have used them all. I think to begin with, 50 years ago, we used premixed hide paste. We made it sure. ourselves, but it's the stuff that looks like it came out of a diaper, just like that. <laughs> and it's... Uh, Dextrin base, it's kind of yellow, it's yellow dextrin in it, it's got a binder in it, maybe yeah. a little wallpaper paste, and it works just fine. We mounted hundreds and hundreds of animals over the years with that, it worked great. Then, um, another one that uh, we went to probably after that was the two-part ear adhesive, yeah. and that's a, an epoxy, and you mix A and B equal parts, you mix it up, it's like thick, thick, thick molasses, um, you put it on your, um, ear liner and you put it on your skin and you slide it in and arrange the skin works good the secret to whatever works is how well you treated the sear did you get the lacquer thinner off of it did you get the I mean the oils off of it with lacquer thinner did you rough it up did you split it to the edges that's the big secret um, not so much the glue then we've kind of since then gone to the high pace I think and yeah. um, we've used uh, Dermagrip before there was, yeah. you know, Pro One, we used to use a lot of Dermagrip. Yeah. And Dermagrip worked fine. And then yeah. came the pink colored Dermagrip yeah. for the inside of the ears. And the idea is that will show through your ear and give you a mm -hmm. flesh colored ear and it actually works. Yeah. And the adhesion was good with it. Yeah. We thought the adhesion yeah. was exceptional. It's nice and smooth. It's a, it's a thin, it works really good. Dermagrip's um, a good product. Um, and then Pro One, we use Pro One on a lot of our um, mounting the deer. So Pro mm -hmm. One is a good um, product and it works for the ears too. Yeah. Another thing uh, I know a lot of people have used over the past, a latex caulk. 
and you can yeah. take latex caulk right out works of a caulk great. gun, put it on your ear, smooth it out, yeah. slide it in, it works good. The secret is not so much the adhesive you use as what you did to this and what you did to this to make it stick yeah. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay, should we take those off? Yes. I'm going to do this, this guy might, over here. They, they might now. pop off. This is what, so be careful. <laughs> so this is the next day you're going to come in after treating your ear like that and you're going to have this. We don't cover them with plastic or anything like that. No. That sits overnight. I can tell this is hard, but I can dent the clay. The clay's soft underneath. The glue that you put on actually keeps the clay from drying out too much. So we'll usually cut cut around wherever there was wherever there was some glue. going to stab myself. <laughs> sometimes they come off really, really easy, sometimes not so. Okay, and the object is to have them come off like this, like that. Now I lose little edges. That doesn't isn't going to bother me. Um, now here's your here's your ear butt, all modeled on in the place you want it. And we have even saved these for a long period of time, mm -hmm. haven't we? By yeah. taking this, putting it in a plastic bag, and you've kept yeah. them for a long time. That one we probably kept for two three weeks, and it was just it was allowed to dry overnight the first time. And then um, the next day we came in and popped them off. We put them in a bag, and in a plastic bag, roll up the end of the plastic bag and pin it to the side of the mount um, so that you don't come in you know, a week later and find them laying on the floor. Um, but we just uh, put them in a plastic bag. If you think it's gonna be a long period of time, sometimes we'll take a little piece of uh, paper towel, wet it, um, let the paper, don't wet the ear liner themselves, just put a little damp piece of paper towel. The humidity will keep that glue from drying too much. If it, if it rehydrates more than you want it to, just uh, let them sit out for a little bit and they'll, they'll firm up pretty good. Now most of these hide pastes that we use these days, we don't use the epoxy quite so, mu quite so much, um, but they're water soluble, they'll clean up with water. Um, some of them, if they, if they dry too much on you, you might have to use a little mineral spirits, um, but uh, you don't have to worry if you get it on your hair. And Tom's just gluing right over the glue, the dry glue um, that we had put that we had put on that uh, that prior. you had put on the ear liner. Yeah, yep. that's a don't forget that trick because it's very helpful when when he painted that on. He painted his ear liner again. Yep. And now that ear liner glue is dried like a rock. I mean, it's hard on, it's part of the ear liner, and that's going to help glue this glue to that skin. Yep. David Bertaman would like to know if you can put them in the freezer for longer periods of time. Which part? The ear, I would assume. I think that would be fine. We've yeah. We've done that, I think. Um, well, we've mounted deer and ears and put them in the freezer. Yeah, sure. Um, and we do that, we'll do that with this cape. Um, and that's kind of nice to do is to take them off. If you have the time um, to babysit just the ear, um, we'll do just like we are with this one. We'll mount the ear, put the ear liner in the ear skin, position everything around the ear butt, make sure that our hair patterns are really nice. And then um, if it's toward the end of the day, just put that cape away, put it in the freezer. And we find and it uh, sucks down really good. And it kind of does. It's pretty helpful. And it makes your mounting day, um, the day that you get the cape out, that's one less thing for you to worry about. You can worry about taxing skin in a bunch of other places, but because it's frozen, um, once it thaws out, you can still taxi the skin around the ears and antler burrs and things like that too. So. Um, that's a very, very useful tool. Now, last week we mentioned 
don't get carried away with three other deer that you got lined up to mount. Mount mm -hmm. one ear first. When one ear, now we're gonna have another ear right behind it, but mm -hmm. when one ear looks like a whitetail or whatever animal it happens to be, then we're gonna go on to the second ear. Yeah. Um, this is a great little tool for adjusting your skin. You can move your skin on the ear liner without it's hurting it. Very nice. And you're gonna want you're gonna want some reference. You're gonna want to look at at how this skin lines up on the ear liner. You want a nice break between your white inner hair and your gray outer hair. Who has gray outer hair? Gray outer hair. I'm getting gray outer hair, <laughs> let me tell you. Okay, we're mounting the ear. We're not worrying about the rest of the deer. We're mounting the ear. And we'll use little, little brushes. And we want this ear beautiful. Now these are guard hairs that come across the surface of the ear, the front, front dish of the ear, and they protect the ear from wind and bugs, and they lay right across the ear like this, nice and kind of kind of just like a curtain. Now, I'm also running my fingers down any of these little valleys, spreading out my dispersing my glue. Make sure that on the inside, um, we talked about drumming, you'll feel it now. If it's, gonna, if it's too tight, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to get it stuck down. And I'm just taking my finger, dispersing any glue, working any air pockets out. Now my inner, inner ear canal, here's the deal. Somebody asked about for competition, leaving that in. Um, the judge is gonna take a flashlight and he's gonna look down in that hairy ear and he's gonna say, I think that looks great. I mean, because you, it's too woolly in there <laughs> to see much. You can feel, and it feels good to me. Yeah. I probably even had wax in mine when I did it. <laughs> Fresh. Now I can yeah. see on the outside of the ear, my ear goes like this, my whole ear skin. So I wanna line that up. And always come back to your ears. Don't just stick them in and forget them. Uh, make sure that when you get the other ear in that you come back and check the first one. This is a nice little brush also for getting inside of your ear and actually you can twist it to get the hair out. Thought of something we can show them too. Oh yeah. Okay. Once, once you have your ear mounted, you're going to do the other one. Always come and check them. Always, always be checking. It's even a good idea if you're not finished with this deer today. Put a garbage bag over his head overnight, and this will keep it from drumming and, and drying out. We've even put damp paper towel packed down That's in nice. here, which yeah. keeps it nice and moist. Once you think, once you think you've got a good looking ear, I think that's kind of looking like a nice ear. Once you think you have a ear that you can live with, do the other one, mount the deer, and then we like to use these little 
ear carding system like that. They come in mm -hmm. sets, right? Yep, yep. Um, come with paper clips. You get a couple of them. Now, I wouldn't do this probably till I'm done with the deer because I want to play with his ears and kind of babysit them a little bit. But once it's time to set aside and dry, these were, whoops. And they're going to give you the nicest, nicest edges on your ear. I know a lot of people use, use screen and different items, um, different materials. Um, these work very good. And they have, they're perforated so air can get to them and they can dry real well. Okay, we went on too long. These poor people want to get home and go to supper. <laughs> Van, please send us a direct message with your order number, and we will look into that for you. And then Jim says, first time watching. This is awesome to watch. I do like the liners, but not the artificial earbuds. But I have a lot of detail to work on with clay. This will be very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And a little trick that you taught us is these big paper clips um, want to slide off and if you bend them yep. put a little arc in them they want to stay on and that will hold your ear in position like I said I wouldn't probably do that until I had both ears done and eyes set and everything and walk away sure. from them at the end of the night And whoops, we're flying off. And we have a giveaway. We do. And the we giveaway, I think, is this book. That is our Dear Ear Photo Reference book. Handy, and all they handy, do is handy, like and share, handy. like and share, like and share. Like and share. The winner goes to Fred Burtz. And Fred oh. won <laughs> by liking and sharing last week's live video. There Good job, go. Fred. Well, I hope that, hope that helped you out on ears. Try, try it. Um, try building your ears ahead of time. Your first, if you've never done it before, your first one is you're going to think, wow, this is really hard. And the result mm -hmm. is going to, you're going to think, wow, that worked really well. Um, as you do more and get faster at it, you get faster and faster. Yeah, and you do. for you to s build earbuds probably takes you seven, eight minutes per side. Probably, yep. And... Um, mm -hmm. And then hope we helped you out in washing your ears and roughing up your ear liners. That's really important. Yeah. And next week we'll be back with something. Something. Stay tuned. <laughs>